So you think you know how to light. Amazing, you should be teaching. But if you don't know how to light, that's maybe why you found this video. I'm gonna show you today some easy one light setups you can do, how to do Rembrandt lighting, how to do butterfly lighting, all in the studio. Let's go there right now. What's up guys? We're here to talk about studio strobes. Think about studio strobes as every studio light, whether you are shooting with Ellen Chrome or Pro Photo or Bron Color or Godox, if you're using studio strobes, they all have the same settings. They have a power button on off. They also have a modeling light button on off. You can see the modeling light in the background, turning that modeling light down, off, back on. And they also have power, power up and power down. The thing that's incredible about the way that flashes are able to be adjusted is you can drop them down in like tenths of stops or 30 seconds of stops and this kind of control in combination with a light meter you're able to really really tune your photography we have the lovely hannah on set i'm going to show you what i do when i'm shooting a model in studio and i'm also going to demonstrate how easy it is and how creative you can get with one light Softbox, raw, grid. I'm gonna show you so many different ways for you to light with a single light. And then later on, we're gonna get into two lights, three lights. We're gonna do some LEDs. I'm gonna show you, this is gonna be a crazy course. I can't wait for you guys to get into it. All right, let's get into it. First main light here. Now we are doing a one light setup with Hannah. Hannah Banana, you feeling good? You're looking fly. All right, so one main light. What I want you to watch is because I'm shooting primarily headshots, again, I wouldn't normally be shooting horizontal, but I am choosing to shoot horizontal just so you can see light. I'm also using one head. What I'd like you to see is the angle of the light coming from here down at Hannah. So when I am shooting, I like to back up a little bit and make sure that the line that's happening here is matching. The next thing that I think that is super crucial that not enough photographers do, there's an axis point that I think that every photographer kind of needs to know. So, woo! This is called the shooting plane, meaning this is the line that me, the photographer, that I'm allowed to go up and down, okay? Now, Hannah, because she's sitting on the background, what we're gonna, here, stand up for a sec, Hannah. We're just gonna put this right in front like that, quickity quick, have a seat now, perfecto. And now, what this is, this is called the subject plane. Let me just move this Godox big ass box out of the way. I have a softbox here so I can show you in a second what softbox light looks like. Okie doke. So we have these two lines. Next, for this particular demonstration, I'm set up so I'm exactly on this plane. My light is exactly on this plane. It's above her. So you see how her head's here, it's above her, it's aiming down. Now I want you to look at her face and you see how it's nice and even, there's nice shadows under here. It looks perfect. All right, let's pop a shot and I'll show you what this looks like. Oh yeah, by the way, how about a light meter reading? All right, we're gonna take a reading. This is all done automatically, you can see here. This is a light meter, I have it set for ISO 100, it's on non-cord at F. We don't know the F yet, but when I pop it, that's gonna give me a reading, watch. That's saying 1.40, but I'm back here, I'm behind the light. So let's go in front of the light, we'll take a flash reading. Always take a light meter reading under the chin, aimed at camera. If I need to meter a light from the side and find out exactly what that reading is, I'll do it that way. If I need to take a light meter reading from this side, I'll do it that way, but I'm right there, that's my camera position, so we're taking the reading from here. And it is giving us 11.2. Now that is not 11.2, that is 11 and 2 tenths of a stop. 
So 11 and 2 tenths of a stop is almost 11 and 3 tenths of a stop. 3 tenths is a third, so it's 11 and a third almost because it's 11.2. This trigger we put back on the camera. Good. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm just catching a little bit of my light stand. Did you guys see that? Okay. Give me like a little bit of a turn. Give me like a little... You, you're feeling it. You're feeling it and I'm feeling it and this is such an amazing photo. Wait till you see this. Okay. That's it. That's it. That's it. Love that. Look at me. Look here. Good. Mouth open. Mouth open. Look at the ground for me right here. Look at the ground right here. Here, stand up. Stand up. Go like this. Okay, sit back down. There you go. Now are you dizzy? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hannah. Look at me. Great, great, great. That's it. That's it. Amazing, Hannah. Amazing. And look at this. This is super clean. This is one light. This is what you can do in studio with one light. Look at that. The exposure is super clean. Okay. Look at me here. Look at me here. Beautiful. Now the only issue is that this is a little flat. So I want you to look at this and you're going to see that this is a little flat. And the reason is because I'm hitting her this proportion and this height of the light. It's not high enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sky the light more. And again, what I'm using, and the reason that I'm using no modifiers right now, I'm just using the reflector, is so you can actually see the shadows. So you can actually see what the light looks like and what your placement is like, so the placement is actually perfect. I want you to show me just that little head down. Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. Show me like arms, you know, just give me like a little fat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not too much armpit. It's okay, it's okay. No, just um, maybe more like this. Yeah, yeah, good, 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 good. Good, good. Bring, how about bring your hands in between here? Good, 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 good. Good. So you can see here now, I'm coming a lot higher with this photograph. I'm coming a lot higher with the light. And you can see it's a lot more molded. Show me dead on now again, dead on. Just do this with your hair for me. Good, good, good. Bring your hands up like that and do that again. Good, that's great. Drop your chin a touch. Do that one more time. Mouth open. Good. Let your, hair, let your hands down. Beautiful, beautiful. Do this just in the front for me. Do, like, just do like this, just to mess your hair in the front a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, good. Here, one sec. Yeah, just like get it in. Beautiful. Okay. Look at me, look at me. That's great. Chin up for me. That's it. That's it. That's it. Just like that. Beautiful. Oh, that's great. Okay. Amazing. So straight on, you can see the light straight on is so, so, so beautiful, but I want to modify that. So I'm going to change it from being hard looking like sun source. I'm going to move this light out of the way. I turn the power off on this one and then we're going to move the Godox light in with the softbox and I'm going to put that softbox on that with that Godox light in the exact same position. Okay, now what we're doing now, a much larger light source. You can see the last light source I was using was almost like a pin because it's a strobe small source. I mean, it's undiffused. So because it's undiffused, it's coming from a small source and it becomes a very sharp light. So right now we're doing the exact opposite. I'm using a massive, massive umbrella. I'm using a massive umbrella and I'm going to sky this umbrella to the same position that it was in the last photograph. You guys are going to choke a little bit when you see this, this is going to be gorgeous. Okay, trigger, thank you. These are Profoto lights. I flip between Profoto and Ellen Chrome. I'm gonna take a light meter reading on this. Chin up for me, Dolan. So you see the angle here? And also, what I, stay there. What I want you to do is see the angle here and how we have to make sure that this angle, which right now isn't hitting her face, it's hitting more her body. So I'm gonna just bring this light just a touch forward 
So it hits her face just a bit more. Next, let's shoot a test. Oh, let's uh, take a light meter reading, shall we? That probably makes the most sense. Wrong trigger. Wrong trigger. <laughs> Wrong trigger. Yes. One point four five. It's not uh, powered high enough. Um, I need. I'm sure you can, like, increase. Can't you increase the power on this without dropping this every thirty seconds? It's at five. And we're doubling it to 10. And again, keep in mind this softbox eats a lot of light. A lot of light. I don't think I clapped. Gotcha. Thank you. This softbox eats a lot of light. Now we're at eight even. 8.01. Julie, you can take the next meet light meter reading. Okay, here we go. Let me show, now show me that those legs wide and give me like a swaggy sense of, yeah, 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 yeah. No, don't, don't push left, right. Just show me hands on the hips. Yeah, exactly like that. That's dope. Really strong. Really strong, Hannah. That's great. The light and the shadow is basically pushing right back. You can see literally that the light and shadow is pushing right back behind her. And also because it's a diffused light source, because we're using a huge softbox, you can see that the shadow just liquefies. You can see the light super even on her face, but it's also boring. So I am going to try to make this light a little bit more dynamic. Let's style this shot a little bit. I also, I'm shooting full length. I like that pose. I like it. I'm also shooting full length. So I really want to make it so when I make an eight by 10, I'm not losing um, her feet or her hair. So right now you can see I have perfect comp composition for, oh, and also my reading was F8 on the dot, correct? That's a little bit hot at F8. Personally, I'm going to go to F10. F10 looks almost perfect. F10 looks almost perfect. Q. Julie, can you take a reading, please? Under her chin. 8-1. Thank you. Good. Do that again with your hair. Do it again. Good, good, one more time, great. Okay, you can see again, cool but boring. So I wanna make it a little bit more exciting. But what the whole point of that is to show you is that diffuse light versus hard light. Now I'm going to switch back to hard light because for this next demonstration, I think that it's important for you to see what I call the arc. I'm going to demonstrate on the floor exactly what the light arc means. We're gonna bring back out the hard light. We're gonna switch the triggers and I'm going to do the arc. For this, Hannah, because this is a bit of a face exercise, I'm going to get you to sit back here. You will be standing again, I promise. And yeah, let me just have the tape again because we're going to extend this all the way back to me. Okay. Now, what we're doing right here is called the arc. And I'm showing you, you can see here, my lens is exactly on this plane, which is what I call the shooting plane. So if you're not shooting with a tripod, if you're not shooting with a tripod and you're shooting like this, then the idea is you can move in on this plane and move out. But as soon as you start shooting this way or start shooting this way, the light changes. So it's super critical that you know what your shooting axis is. So the vision of your light 
doesn't end up being not what your light looks like, okay? So we're gonna start in what we call position one, which is with this light exactly on the same plane as me, right? If you, you can also, this light could be behind you. It doesn't have to be exactly in front like I'm doing it, but I'm doing it this way just for the demo because it makes the most sense. Look at me, gorgeous. Oh, it's so good having amazing models today to shoot. Beautiful, Hannah, beautiful, beautiful. Oops, no trigger. Um, yeah, it's trigger, not trigger, by the way. It's offensive, it's offensive when you say trigger. It triggers me. <laughs> okay, look at my face. Sweating like a New York waiter. <sighs> the lovely Hannah Banana. All right. Okay, so the light that I'm hitting her with is just an LED, just to bring more light on the scene, but the photography light will always overpower it. We're going back to that exact, to that clean shot where I'm shooting her straight on with the light straight on. You can see the shadows. You can see how relatively flat her, like uh, the light is on her face, right? That's all based on this angle here and this coming down here. Now, what I'm doing next, I'm going to sky this light a little bit just to give a little bit more of a more balanced perspective. Just look at camera for me, Hannah. There we go. So you can see that light on her now. You can see the shadow, just look at camera still. You can just see the light shadow, drop your chin a touch. You can see the light shadow here and also push your chin out like you're putting your chin on a table. Exactly. Okay, Hannah, you look amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. This is beautiful. Little vibes, it'll give me little vibes, little twinkle in your eye, little vibe in your eye. Smiley, smile, vibe. Good, good, good. Mouth open. Good. Beautiful. That's beautiful. So, super clean. Now, I want you guys to understand when it comes to light placement, I usually place the light in like a couple of different areas. But here's a little trick as far as what I call safety zone and extreme zone. Okay, I'm gonna show you this with demonstration on the floor, but the safety zone is anywhere within the extension of your arms that you put the light. So if the light is anywhere from here, back here, or here, back here, I only light from right to left when I'm using a single source, I'll also show you that. So right now, if I put my arm here and grab this light, and the reason that I call this the safety zone is because you cannot fail if you put your light within arm's length of you. You can't fail. So this is me putting this light within arm's length of me this way, and I could do also the same thing with arm's length that way. So we are going to put a marker on the floor here and what we're going to call this is the safety zone. And if you want to measure this, you can see this is roughly two feet from camera position, roughly. Hold that for me. Lovely. Okay. And what we're, don't worry about it, it's fine. And we will draw this right from here all the way over to say here. So if you imagine this goes back over to here, we can complete this line just so it looks better visually. So basically, <laughs> it's a bit crooked, but you can see this is the axis and this is what we call the safety zone. So I'm going to drop a picture of Hannah with the light at the right height. Look at me, Hannah, with the light in the safety zone. Beautiful. And you can see that, look how pretty that is. Look how pretty that is. Oh my God, that's amazing. So I, I haven't shown you anything yet, I'm sorry. So yeah, she looks, it looks amazing. Okay, here we go again. Beautiful, Hannah. Okay, so now you guys have seen um, Rembrandt lighting, light dark, right? Light dark when the light's coming not from camera position, this gives you relatively even. I'm moving the light off of camera axis. 
and I'm going to move beyond what I call the safety zone into the extreme zone. And the extreme zone is anything beyond, I would call it at like the 45 degree mark. What I'm going to show you is how I find perfect light placement. And Meng, if you come behind me, you'll definitely be able to see this way more accurately. Oops, let's just pick this up. You'll definitely be able to see it way more accurately. And Hannah, I'm gonna get you to look at camera position, look directly at camera. If you stand right behind me, where I'm standing right now, do you see how you can see her second eye? Like, where I'm standing, I need to be able to see, just keep looking at camera, I need to be able to see this eye. So from your position right there on camera, you can see how you see this back eye. Now, if I place the light there and make sure, look at camera, Hannah, that I can see that rear eye. It's almost like pool. You stand right there, you make sure that the model is looking at camera position. And then now when I come back to camera and drop that photo, you can see, boom, exactly how different that looks compared to the last frame. And again, that's just moving the light. Julie, you can come over here and have a look. That's just moving the light into what I call the extreme zone. The extreme zone is the place where shadows and highlights meet. Now, the thing that you're gonna notice and the thing that I'm gonna fix right here is this area of her nose right here. You can see here how her light travels in straight lines. So you can see how based on my light position, how I need the light to go higher, which is going to push that nose triangle down. And it's going to wrap and hide that little bit of a highlight that's happening here on her nose. But you see, other than that, everything else looks amazing. So same position. The only thing that I'm doing is skying the light just a little bit more. Hannah, just looking back at camera, just aiming this down just a touch. Beautiful. And now I'm pushing those nose shadows down. Okay, Hannah, I want you to drop your chin just a touch. Yeah, put your chin on the table like I showed you and drop your chin. There you go, just like that. Give me a little bit in your eyes there. There, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Chin up for me, touch. Chin up, chin up, chin up, chin up. Beautiful, you see that? That's exactly, that is exactly what we are talking about and let me show you here on Lightroom. Okay, here we go. Give me that again, girl. Give me that again. Yeah, good. Put your hand on your hip for me. Beautiful. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. Head more straight. Head more straight. Beautiful. Put both your hands on your hips. Beautiful. Stay like this. Chin up for me. Beautiful. Look at that. How pretty that is. Look at that, that's so pretty. So now that we've kind of found the sweet spot as far as our light, and again, I'm not sure if that's the last one or if this is the last one. Okay, exposure on that looks a little low. Look at me here, love, great. Yeah, that's way better, that's way better. That's way better, I was shooting it a little bit low. There you go, that's way cleaner. Way cleaner. The light's still not exact because I'm still getting a bit of a weird shadow there. So what I'm gonna do, look at light, look at camera for me. I'm just gonna move this way, just a touch, just a touch, like the smallest amount, smallest amount. Now, I would like to bring in some negative fill. You know my friend Phil, negative fill. In order to stop light from kicking back, we're gonna put this right beside her. And then I'm gonna show you also the same thing, but with a reflector. Beautiful, look at me here. Oh, that's so sick. So sick. Do you guys find that helpful? The reason that I had to stop so abruptly is because there is so much content there, I kinda of have to break it into multiple videos. Usually people have short attention spans, so the fact that you made it this far Make sure that you drop what camera brand you shoot with in the comments.
that would be cool. And I'll see what cameras you shoot with. I shoot with Canon R5 and six different lenses, all Canon. Um, yeah, if you like this video, consider subscribing. Um, I'm a fun guy. I do live streams three days a week. You can find all that information, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, SteveCardi.com, blah, blah, and uh, blah, 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 blah. Thanks.